All right, so we're going to take a look at assembling the mechanical parts of a split flat module. So we're going to start with uh, one of the module's laser cut pieces, which looks like this. And the first step is going to be basically just separating out all of the pieces and removing the protective uh, sticker that's on top of it. All right, so that is everything that we need from this. So the rest of this is just trash. On this side, we're gonna have to peel up this other protective film. And this is going to be the outside um, because this is kept cleaner and it doesn't have the, the laser burn marks. All right, so let's organize these parts a little bit here. So over here we have kind of the main enclosure. So this is the front face, the two sides, and the top and the bottom. And then these are pieces to assemble the spool. And then these two up here are intermodule connectors. So those allow two modules side by side to be connected to each other we're gonna start with the uh, spool assembly. And to assemble the spool, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna start by grabbing a bolt and a nut. Essentially, these pieces will fit together to form a little square piece, something like that. And then there's two different spool end pieces. Uh, so one of them has the hexagonal hole in the middle, and that's what's gonna hold the nut in place and prevent it from turning, like that. And then the other one is where the motor shaft will mount. And it also has a hole for uh, magnet. So what we wanna do here um, is we actually first wanna use this piece, which is what our bolt hooks onto. So we're just going to loosely slide that on. Uh, we don't want to tighten it up yet because we need to get the orientation of that aligned. All right, so this piece is going to fit in here. And then we want to have the square holes aligned when we go ahead and tighten up this nut. And then this will just go ahead and slide on here. Might be a little bit of a tight fit. There we go, so it should fit in just like that. And then we can go ahead now and use this to go ahead and fully tighten that bolt. And then we can also go ahead and put the other side of the spool on the other end, so like that. So that's ready to go. All right, so the next step is to put the magnet into this hole on the spool. And so that's how the uh, split flap controller can detect when the spool is in the home position. And so it's important when doing this that you put the magnet facing the right direction uh, because the Hall effect sensors uh, are only sensitive to one side of the magnetic field. And so this Arduino is running the sensor test program right now. So all the lights will be purple. And then when the magnet is brought close to the sensor and the sensor detects it, it will turn green. So we know that this side of the magnet is the side that we want facing out on the spool. Now this is the tricky part. We're gonna just kind of try and press fit this into that hole. It might be easier if we get this kind of lined up. There. And then we flip it over and just press down like this. There we go, that worked. All right, so we've got that mounted. Let's again double check. that We've got it facing the right way. And we do. So we'll go ahead and put this back onto the rest of the spool. 
Next, we're going to be assembling the main enclosure here. So to start off, we're going to actually go ahead and mount the motor to uh, one of the sides. And so again, remember that the clean looking side is always facing out. And so here we want to feed the motor through this hole. And then we're going to add some screws to attach it. The screws should come in from the front face of the motor. Go ahead and put a nut on the back on each of these. We can go ahead and tighten those up. Cool. And so the motor is going to be facing so that the wires are actually coming out of the top. Um, we can actually go ahead and mount the Hall Effect sensor if you have that ready. If you don't have that ready, you can always come back to it and add it later. The way that this goes in is get the Hall Effect sensor sticking out this way. We're going to feed it in through the bigger hole on top here. And you'll notice that the pins from the pin headers actually line up with that thin slot right below it. And that's what keeps this from spinning. And so we just need to attach this in place. And for this, we're going to feed the screw in from the inside, attach a nut on the outside. For this, we want to just tighten it up ever so slightly. Um, we don't want to tighten it too much because we're going to adjust that in order to calibrate the module later. Okay, so now that we've got the motor and the Hall effect sensor mounted, we're going to go ahead and start assembling this. Um, so one of the first things we want to do here is take our spool. We have the side with our motor mount. We're going to go ahead and line those up so that the flat parts of the motor mount line up with the flat sides of the shaft. We're going to press that on nice and gently. It's going to be a tight fit. And if it, you press it a little too far, um, you can always use a screwdriver to just kind of back it off a bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. So that should be pretty sturdy. We'll go ahead and attach the top and the bottom now. So the bottom one is the side with the laser cut lettering on it. Um, and so this one is going to insert this way. Right, so with the hole towards the what will become the back of the module. That will just press fit nicely in there. And the top, again, we want the nice side facing out. So on the top here, we'll do the same thing. Again, we we'll want to make sure that the circle is towards the back, it's towards the longer side, like that. So we can kind of see this taking shape here. The front will go right on there. We can go ahead and attach our right side here. We're going to go ahead and line up the tabs on the bottom, press that in, make sure that the bolt from our spool lines up with the hole here, and then we'll go ahead and insert the top tabs. So this should be a nice easy press fit in, and we've got that, and you should have enough space on the right side for this to turn freely. Now the front face the thicker side should be on the left side, on the side with the motor, and the thinner side on the right side. And this should just press onto those top and bottom pieces. Like that. This is mostly put together. It's Right now it's just press fit together. So we'll want to go ahead and add some bolts to hold everything together. The way that these work is uh, what's called a captive nut. So essentially what we do is we take a nut, we line it up with the slot here, and put it in kind of halfway, and then we take our bolt and screw it in from the front. And those should tighten against each other and hold 
Uh, this one holds the front plate on. All right, so now we've got our enclosure and spool assembled. Everything is nice and tight. And uh, one final thing is a bolt down here on the side in this slot, which is the flap backstop. And this is what prevents flaps from swinging once they hit the bottom. And so it's adjustable. Let's just put it kind of in the center um, and just loosely tighten that in place. We'll adjust that once we get the flaps in place. So now if we wanted to attach this to another module, we can take off the front plate, front face, with just taking off those two bolts and just gently peel this off. Like so. And then we can take our intermodule connectors and slide them in to the top like that. And again, another one on the bottom. Once those are in place, we can replace the front face of the module. What those allow is if we take a second module, we can go ahead and line up those module connectors on the top and bottom, slide them into place, and when we put the other module's front face in place and screw it in, it will lock these together so that they're nice and sturdy.